Ladies and gentlemen, this is the best in the Midwest, Gunner Brave, and you are listening to the Three Count Podcast. I'm in fashion. Rolling. Welcome, everybody, to another great edition of the Three Count Podcast presents Now Winter and Marie, and I'm your host, Clifford Red Dog Miller, the man that leads you up this mountain called wrestling. That's right. And like every episode I've asked you, I hope that you guys will say it with me, you should call me your Sherpa. But like every good Sherpa, you got to have someone who's been there, done that, and can do it more efficiently than you can. That's why it's not about me. It's about who's entering the ring. And today, you see him right next to me. He can be found at RPW, High Voltage, Lucha Libre, Legacy Pro, SCW, and MPG. He is the king of the north and a man of the Midwest. Give it up for Gunner Brave. I hear him roaring in the background. I hear it. Building. Everybody turn up the radio right now. Like, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> no, I appreciate you having me. I appreciate Hell yeah, you. yeah, man. I'm, I'm excited. So, uh, you know, man, it, it's cool because you were talking about how you're from the Midwest. So, you know, I got to represent too because, you know, I'm a Nebraska boy myself, but okay. currently living in Maryland. So, you know, shout outs to, shout outs to the Midwest. Yeah. Big ups Maryland too. Don't forget that. <laughs> yeah, East Coast can be like, what about us, bro? Be like, yeah, yeah. listen, <laughs> I like I love that. the East Coast, man, but it's the Midwest. Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, so actually, I was doing some research and stuff like that. I saw that you actually are, uh, you're a Seth Rollins, uh, yes, student. I am Black and Brave Wrestling Academy class fourteen. So oh. three years ago is when I graduated. Nice. So we've had a couple of those, a uh, couple of the students come on. Uh, Kyle Shaddix uh, has been on our show. Kai okay. McKenna has been on the show. So we definitely had a few of uh, of the brave students on here. It's kind of cool. Like we've seen like Seth Rollins school like grow, and you just see more and more of the, his students going out there. Oh, and working. it's wild! It's it's international now. There's a kid that just graduated from the last class who had been wrestling in Brazil for three years, but he came over because he wanted to train there. Like, he was already established in Brazil and came over to get more training here. It's wild. Oh, that's cool. See, that's yeah. the thing that we want to hear about, man. It's just like, no matter, like, how long you've been training or where you've been training, like, you can always go out somewhere else and train to get better. You can always better. improve. You can always improve. Even if it's not, like, one of the prestigious schools, everyone's got their every, – you can learn something from anybody. So you never stop learning when you're in wrestling. Right. Because even, like, uh, I know uh, Ziggy Dice, like, he's a he's a brave as well and it was funny like watching him because he was talking about how he's a rocker and then he was just like seth was joking with him and said like hop you know come to the school and he did and now like mm-hmm. looking at him like he's like just tearing up but even him i've seen him like at other like places like uh you know the nightmare factory in georgia oh, yeah. and then he just he just keeps growing too and i'm like he's a different a different breed of dude sick he's just <laughs> I guess I'm a massive fan of him. And his, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but yo, more importantly, let's get to talking about you. Who is Gunner Brave? Uh, Gunner Brave is a. And uh, I grew up in Joliet, and I was always into wrestling. Uh, my earliest memories hey. of wrestling is like five or six uh and then i i decided i want to wrestle for sure uh when i saw the michael's flare match from the retirement match that's i'm like oh, okay this is cool i'm gonna do this so uh then my parents live kind of the outskirts of Juliet, so we have a big open area so i could do as much dumb stuff as i wanted and not be judged by people so i'd get off school climb on the roof jump off the roof just because i was bored um and I went through school doing sports, making sure my like cardio was there and my strength was there. I wrestled amateur for four years in high school. Um, and it, the passion for wrestling is something that never really dwindled in me. I think my parents kind of hoped it would because I want like a college kid, you know. Um, but it didn't dwindle. So once I turned 18, I, I knew like I've been preparing for this. I've got my cardio there. I, I've self-taught myself a good bit of things, obviously not to the professional extent. So at the age of 18, I moved to Iowa for about four years, uh, four months, um, four months to train. And then I moved back to Joliet and kind of got my funds up and reestablished there. And now I am a, I want to say proud Iowa native, not native, Iowa resident, because like it's Iowa, 
can't really be too proud of it. But I live in Iowa now, and I'm just doing my thing. I'm just a young kid who doesn't either has a really good pain talent or is just really stupid. And I'm having fun. That's all I know. Just having fun right now. <laughs> you know, so as a Nebraska kid, right, I, uh, I can relate to amateur wrestler myself. Mm-hmm. Uh, wrestled four years out in western Nebraska, and then I moved to Iowa. And I wrestled out in Iowa. Like, so, one, I know about the amateur background out there in the collegiate world because that's not oh, a yeah. joke. Yeah, whenever you're at, a, you're at Northwestern College up in Orange City, Iowa, shout-outs to the Red Raiders. You guys get that. Free Big ups, plug. Raiders. You can, you can have free <laughs> plug this one time. Uh, <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, I, I wrestled up in that area. And then, like, I know, like, the talent pool is, like, always massive. And then to see the, the, the pro wrestling scene is, like, growing out in Davenport is oh, ridiculous. Yeah. It's wild. I've seen even just in, like, the three years that I've been here, kind of back and forth, back in – 2019 if i said oh i'm a wrestler people are like oh you what college do you go to now if i say oh i'm a wrestler it's like oh you want to seth rollins kids like it's <laughs> just in those three years it exploded yeah he's done incredible things with like that whole that whole area it he's is really it giving is back to the community it's really commendable the work he's doing to make davenport like an actual place yeah i mean and then you know he has his own coffee shop right there too i know like he had closed down but then he was like trying to reestablish it too so he's got a lot of stuff that he does he ties really well into the quads like i have to give a lot of props man i'm just like yeah damn bro like you are you are putting in the work but Mm -hmm. uh so you said like you got into the into the sport you know learning to jump off the roof of your house and stuff like that and then obviously you said michaels and flair was your your go-to match um well when was that moment where you were just like you know what like that's gonna be that's going to be the exact lifetime I'm, I'm going to try to run. It it was actually Michael's flair. Um, I I don't know why, but I was an emotional kid for no type of reason. Like, I would just cry for no – like, I woke up in the middle of the night one time. And you know when you're really tired and you wake up and your eyes are kind of, like, adjusting to light still? I remember I was, like, six. My brother tells me this all the time. I woke up in the middle of the night and my eyes were still adjusting. And I thought, like, the world was ending. So I just started bawling my – so for some reason it's it's it was weird i was not the manliest of men as a child neither am i now but it's whatever um but but for some reason whenever i watched wrestling no matter how upset i was it could make me happy again right yeah and then michael's flair was the first time wrestling ever brought me from happiness to like actually feeling emotion because with the whole with the whole storyline they built up to it so it was at that point where i'm like um if if this lovely world of wrestling can can be such an entity where no matter how upset someone is, it can give them that momentary release from it and bring you out of their world into ours. I'm like, I, I've never been the smartest kid, you know, I'm not gonna be in the NBA. I'm five eight, you know. If I'm given if I have the opportunity to be what the wrestlers were to me as a kid, to to more if I'm able to be that to children now or even adults who are going through some shit where I can just. So, yeah, Michael's flair showed me that, like, wrestling is more than just what's on on Monday nights. For some people, it is the thing that keeps them going. It's their it's their mental break. And I want to be able to be that for other people. So that's why I have. Oh, God, it's upside down, but it's hard to see um, the Michael's flair. I love you. I'm sorry. Super kicks silhouetted. On oh, there, there we go on my wrist. Okay. I think I like it showed that. there. It's fine. Yeah, it's no, fine. I like that a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Super fly. <laughs> yeah, we all have like uh, we always get like everybody gets like these attachments to wrestlers and like for me it's a uh, Rey Mysterio and so okay WrestleMania 22 right like when he won the title like that was like the moment where like everything in me like swelled up and I was like I was. Not bawling, but I did have tears like coming out because I was just so happy that I got to yeah. watch my favorite wrestler from like the time that he was in ECW to go into WCW and then breaking into WWE and then like he's at the peak winning the title. Like, yeah, I was in, I was emotional. I was like, yo, I'm the <laughs> this a ride of this yeah. incredible wrestler who now is just like the face of WWE 2K22. And I'm just like, ah, oh, it. It warms my soul and hurts my soul at the same time because that means that he's getting ready to retire. 
<laughs> he's gonna have that retirement match against like Dominic. Probably, yeah, like, oh likely. my god. <laughs> He's going to reveal that he's actually been Eddie's kid this entire time. It's going to be great. Oh, it's going to be a great time. As long as they reveal that Ricochet is actually his kid, I think I'll be all right. <laughs> you know, like, there was an interview they did with Cultaholic, and he was joking about that. And I was like, actually, you know, I would not be against this at all. <laughs> he's like, but I'm from Kentucky, so, like, I can't. Yeah, anyway. Uh, yo, so what's the worst bump that you've taken? Um, I'll give you two for this because there's the obvious one. Um, the obvious one is February 20th of 2020 for New Wave Pro. They were filming a match because it was mid-pandemic. And it was like a Black and Brave showcase. It was a Fatal 4 match of Black and Brave guys. And um, I went to do a moonsault from the top rope to the outside. And I don't know if like I got the yips or the turnbuckle wasn't tight enough. I don't remember well. Um, but I ended up undershooting. I landed on the back of my head, split my scalp open, uh, spewed some blood, um, had two seizures, uh, was out, like, like you know, for a little bit. Um, k- w- woke up in the ambulance, went to the hospital, got a few staples in my head. Um, luckily, there was no long-term effects from that. Like, I was able to leave that night and um, never lost a bounce, never lost a memory. I was back in the ring with a match like four weeks later took the staples out myself two weeks before that uh but that would be probably the worst like, that's the obvious one um the the other one which is it's a it's a pretty recent one i had a unsanctioned match in rocket Pro wrestling and uh there was a door that we had slanted up and uh we put cut in half soda cans on it sharp side up and i took like uh crucifix power slam on it um that didn't feel too great either i'll be honest with you <laughs> no no <laughs> no not you know what like all of that you can miss me with all of that. <laughs> <laughs> well that's so that's the thing um in that stage of when you're a kid when everyone's like oh wrestling's no longer cool right where you were lame if you watch wrestling my my caveat, like I, I, my way of getting like around to watching wrestling was I would watch deathmatch wrestling because oh it's still wrestling but like it's cool and bloody. But I'd watch guys like Nick Mondo and Ruckus and all those like really athletic CCW guys so I could still watch the actual wrestling. So in a weird way, I actually thank deathmatch wrestling for keeping me into wrestling. Mm. So as much as I don't think I'll, I mean I've done some crazy stuff. As much as I don't think I'll be consistently doing crazy stuff, like I like to dip my toe into there every now and then kind of like as a thank you to the the community um and i've i've been to gcw shows and i've helped make the deathmatch stuff and i love watching them um mainly because like yeah that was that's what kept me into wrestling so i, I have a respect for those guys as crazy as they are and so as an homage to them i i've, I've done some stuff <laughs> nice 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 all right man well you have a match you know, we all get on our show. We all have our pre-rituals, but I got to know more about the post-ritual, man. So, what is a post-match snack, post-match meal that you have? Um, now that I'm 21, uh, I usually have a fan buy me a drink. That's that's kind of <laughs> how I do things. Um, but no, most matches I have to sit down for a bit because I do a lot. Of, I do a lot of stupid dives and stuff, and then I, um. It's weird. I don't really eat much show days in general, so I don't really get food there. Um, but yeah, I kind of just I need a mental cool down, so I'll just walk around and once like the show's over, I'll just go uh, converse with people. And then if I'm in my hometown, um, I'll find like the a club to go to with the boys. But I've always been kind of I was never really a big party guy until I became 21. So I don't really do much wild stuff until now. Um, so post-match for me, you'll see me sitting in the back complaining about how much my neck hurts, and then I'll go out and act like I like people. (laughs) I like that. I like that a lot. (laughs) (laughs) So what's one of the hardest lessons that you've had to learn being in a business? Um, patience. It really is patience. Because, like, Especially 
when kids come through Black and Brave, and not everyone, but I've definitely seen it. People expect, oh, that man's flying down the street. Um, I got my bay window in front of me. Um, patience is key, because, like, I've seen a lot of guys that, like, they'll go through Black and Brave, and they usually, people with this mindset usually quit right away. But they think, like, oh, because we have the name attached to us, once we're done, we get signed, you know? Um, I've been grinding the same four, five, six states for three years, and, like, is there progress? Yes, but it's very slow, because now there's thousands of wrestlers in every town it feels like so it's it's really just the biggest lesson i've learned is is um how much are you willing to give to get back because at my stage right now i don't get much back you know i'm they young i'm dumb i'll go anywhere if someone gives me like 20 bucks for gas i don't care so like it really is just a matter of like how much do you really want it? And that's something that tested that I've already struggled with a few times, you know, especially after the big injury, I was like, is it really worth doing this again and being stuck in a wheelchair at the age of 20? Like, is that worth it? Um, but the, the hardest thing to learn is how much do you really love what you're doing? And for some people it's, they don't love it enough to, to see it through. So it's a test of your mental fortitude. Yeah, and that's the thing about, like, that's the one thing about wrestling that's kind of, like, kind of odd, kind of cool, kind of rewarding, and it also kind of sucks at the same time, right? It's like, you, you're tested every day, whether mm -hmm. it's something that you really want to do, and if it's not, and then you're, like, putting in the work, and you have to constantly remind yourself that, like, no matter how hard you're working, like, someone's out there working harder than you, and then you're like, is it really worth it, right? And I know, I, and... I've only been in for two years and I have asked myself that question a couple times. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's like, do I really want to do this? And at that, like you're okay. You put out there, you know, you're 21, I'm turning 37, you know, this year. And you, I'm like, you wear it well, sir. You wear oh, it. Well. I appreciate it. First of all, <laughs> let's not do that. Let's not go there. <laughs> but like, it's, it's the aspect of like, yeah, like you really, you, you kind of know the window. And you're kind of looking at it like, I have this much time, but you got to be patient because at any time that window is going to bust open. And then you're kind of like, you want to force your way through, but you know, they, you know, that's gets, that gets looked down on as well. Mm -hmm. And it's definitely tough. And you're just like, you have to constantly remind yourself that like, Hey man, good things come, just keep grind, keep pushing and, and things will break for you. And so I'm just like, okay, I hope so. <laughs> just like, I would just keep doing what I'm doing. And I, I, I remember uh, talking with uh, Dak Draper um, and we used to work I, at the gym that I work at is he used to work out of that gym and we used to talk daily. Right. Not always about wrestling, but there was a time where I was like, Hey man, like, how do I get here? How do I get there? How do I do this? How do I do that? Right. And just ask them questions. Mm -hmm. And he would have answers for me and he would be like, this is what you need to do. This is the path you want to go. If you're trying to get to this spot, you need to, you know, hit up this person, go to this place and then go to that place. I'm just like, damn, all right, this is a lot of work, but I'm going to, I'm going to do what I got to do to get there. Mm -hmm. It really, it really is like a, who do you know, which is, which is good and bad, you know, cause I'm not going to, I'm not going to name drop any companies, but there was this one show that I wanted to wrestle in just to go to a different town. And like the roster is just, horrendous just absolutely horrendous but i want to work there like cool I, I got a friend in town that can see me wrestle for the first time and they told me no and i was heartbroken because i'm like i could do the coolest shit your company's ever seen and you're gonna because they didn't know who i was and i sent them matches like oh well no one here knows you but like i got booked at idva because steve manders drove me it really is who you know and it's it's a stigma that can lead to very good or very bad things because obviously people aren't going to bring people who they don't like with them but also it's like what if i don't know anyone there but i can benefit your company it's it's yeah, yeah. i i've gone i've gone to a couple places and they've told me no like i've i've emailed the promoters and stuff like that and they told me no and then uh i've gone to other places where like they're like i'll you know not that I would name drop a company, but we there's a company they're running a show for veterans, and I just happened to be a veteran, mm -hmm. and uh, me and 
my trainer and his other student who was also a veteran, uh, we went to the show and we worked the show. And although one of them, the other student isn't still there, right? They've asked me to repeatedly come back and come work for them. And I thought that was cool. And I was like, oh, okay. But if it wasn't for my trainer and his name and his trainer Mm -hmm. and them knowing his trainer, like personally, I don't know if I would have ever got that opportunity. Not that I'm not great. I'm very grateful for it. And Mm -hmm. I know, I know the, I know the the magnitude of what comes with it, but I was like, okay, let me, (laughs) let me keep pushing and grinding (laughs) and try to figure this out. So I definitely understand where you're coming from with that. So what kind of advice would you give to like up and coming wrestlers? Um, don't jump the gun. That's, that's one thing I've, I have also learned. Um, and, and there's multiple aspects to it where it's like, uh, if you really want to do this and you really want to be something in this business, you have to fully commit yourself to it. You know, um, I have a buddy who wanted to go to this training school where it was like, you go there once a week for two hours. And then after a year, they graduate you. It, there's nothing wrong with that. But like, like you said, time frame, the window of opportunity really isn't the largest thing in the world. So you really have to get into it. And that's why I went to Black and Brave because like, yeah, it cost me a pretty penny, but I knew that if I want to start on my road correctly, I need to have a good foundation. And then once you get that foundation, you need to almost pick your spots. Cause I remember the I, me and uh, my tag partner had an opportunity to go to the show that would have been a big company for us, but we were not ready for. So one of one of one of the vets that we knew, they pulled us aside and said, "Hey, like you can do this show, but like." If you go there and you shit the bed, they're not going to bring you back when you're ready, no matter how ready you get. So just if you want to do this, put your nose to the grind zone, work, listen to anybody, go vent ideas, bounce back and forth. Don't be stubborn headed. Keep your ears open and just take things one step at a time. It's the best way to look at it. Yeah, no, that's great advice. And it's great advice to give like while you're 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 getting on the come up like it's definitely important <laughs> uh, so being that you've been around in a lot of different locker rooms and you've kind of been traveling a little bit i gotta ask for one do and one don't of the locker room um do is mainly just obviously there's the whole like oh walk around and shake hands with everybody which is kind of uh some people say it's gone. Some people say it's still there. I still do it because it's a respect thing. But the biggest do is just be respectful. Um, I like to, if I'm going to a show, I will find out their roster before I get there. So I'm not walking around for the first time like, oh, who are you? I'm their champion. Oh, my bad. You know, like kind of know who you're going to be around. If they do a match card, you know, recognize names to faces and just be respectful. If you're a younger guy, and every seat's took and there's a vet there give the dude your chair you know be respectful because it'll they'll respect that um don't exact the opposite don't act like you're bigger than everybody don't go in and kind of turn your nose up and walk past people and act like you're the best in locker. even if you are the best in the locker room just just be respectful do be respectful don't be disrespectful there you go (laughs) i like that uh well man listen like those are all my heavy hitting questions but we do got to get into the second best segment of this podcast you're probably trying to figure out what the first is it's the red dog (laughs) that you can find every sunday on our debate show but this is the three count podcast 10 count questions and mr gunner this how it works i'm gonna fire off 10 questions at you rapid fast and uh whatever's your answer that's that's your answer okay nervous so we're gonna put on the imaginary timer for added pressure and here we go. Smackdown or Raw? Smackdown. Favorite movie? Lord of the Rings trilogy. Nice. Marvel or DC? Marvel movies, DC comics. Okay. Favorite color? Purple. Night Owl or Early Bird? Night. Favorite submission? Um, 
Dragon Sleeper. Nice. I like that. Sonic or Mario? Sonic. Favorite podcast? Uh, three Count Pro Podcast. Oh. No, I guess not marketed. What's up? <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, yeah, okay. So nominate one person that you want to see on this podcast. Um, my tag partner, Sabotage Sean Logan. Me and him graduated together, and we're he's my best friend in the business, and we're like the same age, same upbringing. He did some more stuff before, but he's a he's got a good mind. He's an he's an old soul in a young body. Nice. And then last but not least, my favorite question asked every single person that comes on his podcast. Favorite curse word. Oh I can't say it because oh. I have a lot of friends in Australia, and it's a word that they like to use, but we can't. So I'm going to safely just say fuck. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, see you next Tuesday. That's what it means. <laughs> Yo, we got you. All right. But, yes, a good F-bomb is what everybody should be using. You know, just right. It's, it's just versatile. You can just got to. Everything. You got to. I just put up on TikTok, like, my favorite YouTube video, which was the history of the F-word. So – if you guys follow me on TikTok, you guys can definitely find that video. <laughs> the only black and white video on my whole entire page. <laughs> but Liz and Gunner, uh, that is all the questions I have for you. So the last thing I need is to let our viewers and our listeners know where they can find you. Um, you can find me in Davenport, Iowa off of – no. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, I, Instagram and Twitter are the same thing, just at Gunner Brave. I think one of them is at – I think Twitter's at Gunner underscore Brave, but Instagram's just Gunner Brave. I'm not original with my stuff. Um, and you can find me at your local uh, really good wrestler convention. Um, you can find me um, in your sweetest dreams if you're an attractive mother. Um, a lot of things like that, you know. <laughs> well, there you have it. He gave you a panel. He gave you where you can find them if uh, it's late night. Nah, I mean, single moms. Mm. But uh, maybe even the married ones. Not mine, though. That's hands off. Anyway. I'll be respectful, sir. I'll be respectful. <laughs> but like every good part of a wrestling match, we got to take this home. Because this is the Three Count Podcast presents Now in Ring. And like I said, I'm your host, Clifford Red Dog Miller, the man that leads you up that mountain called wrestling. But like every good Sherpa, you got to have someone who's been there, done that, and can do it more efficiently than you can. And that's why it's never about me. It's about who's entering the ring. And you see him right next to me, looking all lovey-dovey, the man himself, the Midwest king of the north. Gonna brave, and you guys know what to do. Tune into the next episode and be there, or you just wait for that episode to end. You wait for this outro, and then you choose another episode to listen to. Peace. What's going on, Three Count Nation? I'm Clifford Red Dog Miller with the catchphrase. But what I really want to do right now, go to twitter.com, right? Go over there, find us at the Three Count underscore pod, give us a follow, give us a like, give us a comment. We want to talk to you guys. Go to IG at the Three Count Pod, give us a like, give us a follow, leave us a comment. We want to interact with you. Go to youtube.com, give us a subscribe, turn the bell on, turn on notifications, leave a comment. We want to talk to you. Go to anger.fm forward slash the 3Count Podcast, and in there, you can leave us a message, and we will talk to you. Basically, what I'm trying to tell you is that we want to talk to you. We want to have fun with you guys, and we love listening to what you guys have to say. Also, one thing I need you to do for me, the 3Count Podcast also has merchandise. Oh! At prowrestlingtees.com forward slash the 3Count Pod. Please, go buy our t-shirts. We love you guys, and we hope you love us, too. So... Show us some support, please.